This is the story of the decontamination efforts conducted jointly by the Pennsylvania Health Department and the United States Public Health Service during the summer of 1964 at Lansdowne, Pennsylvania. This duplex frame house in the quiet residential section of Lansdowne is unique because its basement is contaminated with radium. Painstaking follow-up of old records and alert action by the Pennsylvania Department of Health reveal that the former owner, a university professor, processed radium in the basement during the 1920s and 30s. Preliminary alpha readings depicted in red on the floor plan were in excess of one million disintegrations per minute per 60 square centimeters. Average alpha levels were in the hundreds of thousands disintegrations per minute. Gamma readings were approximately one millirentgen per hour, three feet above the floor of the basement. Autoradiographs made on sheets of conventional X-ray film of sections of floors and walls show the patterns of contamination. Each dark spot on the film was produced by a speck of radium. A large dark splotch shows where the radium had been spilled on the concrete floor. Knowing the patterns of contamination, appropriate plans for decontamination could be made accordingly. The kitchen was established as the control point. The hallway to the basement separated the clean from the contaminated areas. Personnel were suited with plastic coveralls on top of cloth coveralls. Surgical caps were worn under plastic hoods. Surgical gloves were worn under rubber kitchen gloves. Rubber boots covered the shoes. Masking tape was used to cover all openings. During the decontamination operations, different types of protective clothing were tested. Full face masks supplied with compressed air were worn by decontamination personnel working in the basement. Air samples were taken continuously. Note the two types of masks a Scott pressure demand regulated type on the left and a free flow type on the right. Alpha and beta gamma surveys were also made continuously. Instruments and notebooks were protected in polyethylene bags. After removal of household goods, the entire basement was cleaned with a Cambridge vacuum equipped with an absolute filter. The hose and handle were covered with strippable tape. Vacuuming proved unsatisfactory, however, because the large volume of dust soon clogged the filter. Test samples and autoradiographs indicated that the radium was sandwiched between layers of paint and that chipping was required to remove the contamination. Note that the ceiling was covered with plastic sheet to confine the contamination. The debris was collected in 55 gallon drums. Low level wastes were sorted out and subsequently disposed of in accordance with Commonwealth of Pennsylvania law. The dust was hosed down and squeegeed into a sump from which the wastewater was pumped into a 55-gallon waste treatment tank outside the house. The floor scrubbing treatment proved ineffective, and later the concrete floor was also removed by chipping. Waste drums were packed, sealed, and sorted prior to their shipment to a high-level waste disposal site in New York State. Personnel monitoring was conducted throughout the project and also included nose wipes, urine analyses, and the use of film badges and pocket dosimeters. At the end of the project, decontamination personnel exposures were considerably less than one half the permissible occupational exposure. Contaminated clothing was collected in polyethylene buckets for disposal.
contamination had spread to the outside area during the years that the professor had been processing radium. Surveys made with an alpha monitor, a gas proportional counter, revealed activity on the order of a few thousand counts per minute, and further decontamination was not considered necessary. The thin mylar window of the probe was approximately 440 square centimeters in area and proved effective in covering large areas quickly. Barely detectable traces of radium were found on adjacent properties and presented no significant health problem. Gamma readings were taken with a GM survey meter at the surface and three feet from the center of each drum. An estimated 30 milligrams of radium were collected in a total of 180 55 gallon drums and properly disposed of. The United States Air Force also cooperated in this project by providing the loan of a radiochemistry trailer laboratory containing internal proportional counters and a scintillation alpha counter for checking smear samples, nose wipes, and air filters. While the project required over 14,000 man days, the valuable experience gained and the resulting manual on decontamination of radium will be most useful for future training purposes.